Welcome to our chapel service. Will you please stand as you're able? <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, our help is in the name of the eternal God. Eternal Spirit, flow through our being and open our lips. Let us worship the God of love. Hallelujah. Please be seated. How many of you are familiar with chanting psalms? Great! <laughs> but just to make sure that everyone is able to participate, let's practice. And you're going to notice on the, the lyrics there, we have a bar. That is at the end of a phrase. And those are the last three notes of what we're singing. And those are actually the last three syllables of the line. So the first, my part, will sound like this. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. For God is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. Your line will be, God builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. Let's practice your part. God builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. Beautiful. All right, let's chant. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. For God is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. God builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God determines the numbers of the stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our God and abundant in power. God's understanding is beyond measure. God lives up the downtrodden and casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to God with thanksgiving. 
Make melody to our God on the lyre. God covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass to grow on the hills. God gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. God's delight is not in the speed of the horse, nor the pleasure in the speed of a runner. But God takes pleasure in those who hope in God's steadfast love. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. How many of you remember your first day of orientation at Union? Really, I don't. <laughs> Actually, I remember what happened before orientation, not what happened at orientation. And something happened to me on my commute from Greenpoint, Brooklyn to Union Seminary. Now, like most commuters, I have to listen to music or podcasts when I travel. And when you have a commute that has multiple transfers, you're required to have headphones, reading materials, or both. So that morning when I left the house, I decided I'm going to set my iPod to shuffle. And with over a 1,000 songs on my iPod, who knows what's going to come up? Will it be Bach? Will it be the B-52s? Will it be Rob Zombie? So I get off the L train, and I'm about to transfer to the 1, 2, or 3 train. And I don't know if you're familiar with that commute, but that it's a long tunnel. Stretches from 6th Avenue to 7th Avenue. So I get to the top of the stairs, ready to go down that tunnel, and then this song pops up in my iPod. We're off to see the wizard. <laughs> the wonderful Wizard of Oz. <clears throat> we hear he is a whiz of a whiz, if ever a whiz there was. If ever, oh ever, a whiz there was. The Wizard of Oz was one because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. We're off to see the wizard. 
the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Why did that song play? Seriously, I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. That song played. Why? Was God telling me something? <laughs> was it a sign? Or was it just random? But you know, while those disturbing, it's really funny, while those disturbing questions are going through my mind, I still wanted to skip down the tunnel. <laughs> I was so excited. Now, I've come to realize, though, after five semesters, this is my sixth semester at Union, right? Woo! And yours, too, some of you. I've come to realize, though, that if I'm going to be in Oz, and if I'm going to be in the Emerald City, I'm also to experience those moments over and over again when Toto is going to pull away that curtain and truth and reality are going to be revealed. Because you know, when that curtain is pulled back, you can't put it back. Dorothy and her companions could not unsee what was behind that curtain. Revelation does that to us. You cannot unsee and you cannot unhear. Because what's behind that curtain, you are forced to look at it and you're forced, you're compelled to deal with it. Sunday, January 11th at my church, Advent Lutheran, we celebrated the baptism of Jesus. And in the gospel account, in Mark's gospel account, Mark writes about that when Jesus came up out of the water, heaven was torn open, and a voice declared, you are my son, the beloved, come on, we all know this, with you I am well pleased. Pastor Sudbrock said in his sermon, heaven was permanently torn open for us. Now, in the Greek text, if you read it in Greek, the Greek word for torn open is schizomenus. Mmm. It is, Lindsay. Schizomenus. <laughs> the root word is schizo. This is where we get schism. And I don't know about you, but a schism is a pretty permanent situation. Heaven was permanently torn open for us. Now, I've had the curtain of ignorance pulled back. No, wait. I've had it permanently torn open. And it happened where, Sherry? At Flatbush and Dan? Flatbush Reformed Church in Flatbush, Brooklyn. That was my field ed site last year. Once a week, I would help make a meal for 100 people. And after all of our guests were able to eat, then we were able to eat. One of our volunteers, Donna, one time she asked me, Terry, can I fix you a plate? Oh, yes, I am starving, I said. She looked at me, you know, looked at me. <laughs> I need a serving spoon. Terry, you are not starving. You're hungry. Those people out there, they're starving. Now, can I fix you a plate? <laughs> so I turned around, and I saw a room full of starving people. I was, in, I was experiencing the inconvenience of being hungry. I had this schismatic moment. I love that word, schismatic. I don't think I'll ever use it again. I had this schismatic moment where the curtain of ignorance was completely torn open, and I'm reminded that I'm compelled to share my gift of God's grace with all people. Paul writes in his letter to the Corinthians, I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. 
His experience, he, he had this experience on, on the road to Damascus. Remember the light? Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? That moment compelled him to become a slave, to become a Jew, to become a Gentile, to become one who was weak. He would have been one of those starving ones at Flatbush Church, I think. He became the other. Amy, tell Dr. Call I am preaching Battle Square. You know, you think you hear crazy stuff in class, I'll never use it again. Battle Square. But it's true, right? Everyone matters to God. Everyone mattered to Paul. Everyone mattered to Donna at Flatbush Church. That's a reminder that everyone matters to me. Everyone needs to matter to me. And like Paul, I pray we all do it for the sake of the gospel so that all may share in its blessings. And may our revelations, may our permanently torn open curtains May they compel us to share in God's grace, to share in the good news of the Christ, and to tell everyone that heaven has been permanently torn open for everyone. Amen. Let us be at peace within ourselves. Let us accept that we are profoundly loved and need never be afraid. Let us be aware of the source of being that is common to us all and to all living creatures. Let us be filled with the presence of the great compassion towards ourselves and towards all living beings. Realizing that we are all nourished from the same source of life, may we so live that others not be deprived of air, food, water, shelter, or the chance to live. Let us pray that we ourselves cease to be the cause of suffering to one another. With humility, let us pray for the establishment of peace in our hearts and on earth. May God kindle in us the fire of love to bring us alive and give warmth to the world. Amen. Amen. I just did something that I said I would never do in church, but I looked at my clock. <laughs> it's a nice short service today because you know we have a long week. We have a long semester. So let us stand for the benediction and for the singing of our last hymn. 
So, sisters and brothers, with all of these curtains and walls that are being torn open, permanently torn open around you, and you see things that you are compelled to act on and deal with, may God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and revealer, be with you and bless you on your journey. Amen.